Greatness is not this um, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, God-like feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Yeah. Period. It's that simple. I know who I am, and I know what I believe. I know who I am, I know who, what I believe. that's all I need to know. And that's all I, I need to know. know. So from there, you do what you need to do. Yeah. You know, and I think what happens is we make the situation more complex than it has to because be. Because we're looking for complexity. There's got to be Absolutely. something complex to understand. It right can't now. be that easy. No. We didn't grow up uh, with the sense that where we were was where we were going to be. You know, we grew up with the sense that where we were almost didn't matter because we were it, becoming it, we were becoming right. something greater. So mm -hmm. the only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill. You might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. But if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right? There's two things. You're getting off first, yeah. or I'm going to die. It's really that simple. One summer, his dad tore down a brick wall on the front of his business and told 12-year-old Will and his 9-year-old brother to rebuild it, a job they said was impossible. It took them a year and a half, but they did it. And he said, now don't you ever tell me it's something that you can't do. You don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick can be laid. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a wall. And soon you have a wall. No one cares whether you live or die. And that's where that mentality grows at. I'm going to get it or I'm going to die trying. If I don't try, what am I doing? What, what kind of life am I saving? Like these things is wicked in these mean streets. None of my friends speak. We all trying to win. We all trying to win. And a lot of times we bumping heads because we all trying to get out. That's like the crabs in the barrel mentality, you know, that we have because everyone's trying to survive. And they be trying to survive at any cost. You have to look at that. You got to look at the environments and places we live in and how things are set up and how things are structured and how we're always the last on the totem pole, even from our school and to our roads to, you know, everything that, we, that all the obstacles that's placed in front of us, even our living conditions. Being broke is a great motivator. I have 26 floors and there's a ton of them, right? These low income houses and everything is messed up there. So, Living, that's like living dormant. If this, if this is like, this is what I have to live for, then I'm going to take the chance to get more. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me. He wasn't getting a deal, and he was pitching these songs to these labels, and they wouldn't sign them. We shopped our demo everywhere. We couldn't get a deal. So, you know, it was either give up or say, um, you know, we can do this. I'm, I'm not really with that mainstream thing. You know, as you see, we, we went and we made our own company. Jay-Z and that whole thing and that whole buzz around him that much bigger that yo these guys are doing it on their own they don't even need the label that was the greatest trick in music that people ever pulled off is to convince artists that you can't be an artist and make money <laughs> I, I think the people that were making millions actually set that <laughs> i think they set that whole thing up you know it was almost like shameful like especially in rock and roll you had to pretend it you know you got these millionaire guys who had to pretend as if they weren't successful at all or it would be like a detriment to their career. The record company was uh, becoming successful, and we believed we could do anything at that point. He was like, well, they wouldn't give us a record deal. We started a record label. They won't give us a clothing deal. Let's start a clothing line. We went and got, we had like a, a record company. It was like um, way smaller than this. And um, three sewing machines. <laughs> That's how we started Rockaway. We got wow. three sewing machines and we thought we were going to sew t-shirts. We didn't know, yeah. right? Then we said, we, Russell had Fat Farm and we called Russell and said, right. how'd you do this? And then he introduced us to, uh, you know, the guys that, you know, we partnered up with. And, you know, we went from there. Is I hope to inspire, like, I guess Obama took this thing already. But, you know, <laughs> just the hope of 
you know, how far we can make it in the hope of, you know, if you really apply yourself and uh, stay true to who you are, you know, how far you can come from where you come from. What it did teach me was don't be afraid to try. The worst thing that can happen is it doesn't, it doesn't pan out the way that you envision it. But at least you know that by giving it a shot. You never succeed without that possibility of failure. I mean, each time that I, you know, I do something, it's, I, can, I can go win or I can lose. And you know, it's that inner confidence that you got to have to take that chance. The thing that I've done in my life, I've taken a chance in either succeeding at it or failing at it. But I've taken that chance, and I will not let the opportunity of failure stop me from doing something that I truly, truly enjoy doing. Jones to Jordan, left at the top of the key, shoots from there, he scores! Jordan scores! Jordan scores! The Wizards win 93-92! had a lot of fantastic moments in sports. What's the greatest moment? I mean, what started everything. You don't say know. that. <laughs> don't say, don't say the shot against you. Yeah, that was the greatest moment <laughs> because I think that took me from a, if I had any doubts about playing on college level or playing with the big guys, you know, that shot gave me the confidence that I belonged where I was, you know, and that it was, you know, if you put your mind to doing whatever you want to do, you know, good things can happen, you know, so before anything else happened with Michael Jordan outside of that, that game and, you know, against you guys, that shot gave me the idea that I could be better than what people think and I can you know, surpass any expectations that I may have for myself. Let me turn it. What's your greatest disappointment in sports? I haven't had any disappointments. I mean, you know, sports is a, is, is, is a tool that teaches. You know, and it teaches you bad things. It can also teach you good things. It's how you perceive those things. I've looked at every experience that I've had, negative and positive, and, and taken that as a positive. You know, if I wouldn't change anything because I think it would alter some of the other things that happened. You know, so when I look back, I can't say that I've had any bad things happen. Sure, I mean, you don't want bad things to happen, but you deal with bad things. You can't have good or you know, without bad. Who's your favorite guy to play against? Myself. If I can really elaborate on why I said myself more so than Absolutely. another athlete, is it because a lot of times I had to battle with myself to keep challenging myself. You know, that to me was why I would say the you know, biggest battle was it was myself because when you get to a certain pinnacle, you got to find some ways to keep going out there for 82 games. My competitive drive is. is far greater than anyone else that I've met. You know, I think that I thrive on that. I think that's my biggest motivation in life, you know, is to 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 compete, you know, find different competitions and certain things in life and, and, and try to overcome that, you know, be it positive or negative. But uh, I have yet to meet someone who is as competitive as me, you know, and I just feel that much confident about my competitive drive. One day you might look up and see me playing the game at 50. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. No, no. <laughs> never say never. Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. Thank you very much. And to all of you dreamers out there, keep dreaming, man. But, but you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta wake up from a dream and go get it. You get out of it what you what put you into, into it. it. It's, the game is so simple, y'all just ain't listening. If you're chasing your dream, you're not running fast enough. Run faster. That's you got to work for greatness, man. You got to work. You got to work hard just to be good. So imagine greatness. We're going for greatness. Right now. We almost killed ourselves yesterday. Man, there ain't no ego in getting this paper. You feel me? If you want something bad enough and you got that desire, you, you'll walk to another state or country if you have to. When I was coming up in the game, if I couldn't do the little job, I could never get to the big job. Um, let me tell you about me, one of my secrets to my success. I don't worry about what nobody's doing. 
So all y'all that's out there on the internet that, that, that worry about what people's doing, don't waste your time on, on time that you could be putting towards yourself. Positive attracts positive, negative attracts negative. All the entrepreneurs out there, don't make risky decisions, make smart decisions. Right, let's go. I'm going to keep on rising, you know, because I believe. And I'm a hustler. Shout out to all the hustlers, all the people, the, the men and the women that's out there just trying to make a better future for themselves. Think about your future. That's what's important. I, I just wanted to work hard. I started, my first job was a paper route when I was 12. I wasn't really old enough to get the paper route, but I, I worked it out. Then I worked in a gas station. Then I was a busboy at a Mexican restaurant. And I just, I've just worked all my life. And that's why I try to tell people, if, if, just work as hard as you can. You know, keep your faith in God. All things are possible through God. And I've just been really living my dream come true, man, of, of just being a young black entrepreneur and just sh try to show the world, try to show my people that we could do it if we put the time behind it, put the work behind it. And, um, you know, I just feel like I'm a living testament to people. If you dream and you believe, you could accomplish anything you want to accomplish. It was a hard time, but I was pursuing my dream. You know, I didn't really have no money to eat, no money to get back and forth. But I was like, I would stay focused that I was going to make it one day. Lonely over there when you when you trying to and, and you don't have a silver spoon in your mouth. You don't have the investment bankers. We invest in our own money. We're the only ones that believe in ourselves. And, and that right there, that, that that's not like an easy thing to get up and do every day because there, there's no blueprint for it. There's no school you could go to for it, no blueprint for it. There's no you know and, and there's no there's not a support system. You know what I'm saying? We out there on our own hustling and, and you know making history. You know? I feel good today. Cause I work hard. It's like five in the morning, and um, I'm working. And if you ain't working, you should be working. We got let's get it. And I'm sending this out to all my up and coming business people. If you dream and you believe, you can achieve. The definition of let's go. Let's go. What does it mean? Let's go. Where are we going? Let's go. Where are we going? We going straight to the top, baby. Let's go is a constant reminder. Let's go. Boom. Live in the present. Sometimes you know you daydreaming. Sometimes. You know, Uncle Diddy got to hit you with let's go to make sure that you, you, you're pursuing your dream, that you're staying focused. Let's go. Let's keep going forward. I don't go backwards. I don't go to the side. I go forward. Let's go. Okay? Let's go means let's be positive. Let, 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 let's take it up another notch. Let's go. Let's make these hits. Let's go. Let's go spend time with our kids. Let's go. Let's give thanks to God. Let's go. You know, let's turn it up. Let's get in the vocal booth. Let's stop procrastinating. Let's go, you know, let's understand what it's going to take to achieve that dream. Let's go! Y'all know how bad it is out there. You watch the news like I watch the news. All these little kids dying. and The world just bugged out, man. It's not like it was way before when, you know, as, as we remember it. Even probably people older than me remember it different, like more quiet and calmer. I remember, like, problems, but it wasn't as bad as it is now for, like, the younger generation. So we have to be more, um, compassionate. If you're going to be a thug, be a thug for us. Don't be a thug for the hunk, you know what I'm saying? And, and be in the uh, Marine, the armed forces, or be in jail, you know what I'm saying? Be a thug for your homies, and we can win, really. And just be for real, don't fake it. Make it for real. And that way, you ain't never gonna be confused. People love to, you know, have mercy and sympathy for everything, from the animals, to the whales, to fur, to everything, except us, your youth. The ones who you've had given no attention to, who become adults with no compassion. And I feel like if you walk by a street and you was walking on concrete and you saw roads growing out of concrete, even if it had messed up pedals and it was a little, you know, to the side, you would marvel at just seeing a rose grow through concrete. So why is it that when you see some ghetto kid grow out of all of the dirtiest circumstances and he can talk and he can sit across and you make you smile, make you cry, make you laugh? And that's exactly the analogy that it is for me. You know what I mean? What I want people to know is that don't, don't support the phonies. Support the real. You know what I mean? How can these people be talking about how they so real and they don't care about our communities? How can they be talking about what they all this, you know, the hood, blah, 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 blah. They don't care about our communities. You know what I mean? Listen to the words that people say in their lyrics and tell me if that's some real sh if that's real to you. You know what I mean? Listen to what they saying. Don't just bob your head to the beat. Peep the game. 
And listen to what I'm saying, hold us accountable for it. No matter what these people say about me, my music does not glorify any image. My music is spiritual if you listen to it. It's all about emotion. It's all about um, life. And it's, the rappers might, you know, paint a perfect picture of themselves or, you know, whatever. I get, I tell my, my, my innermost darkest secrets. I reveal myself in every one of my records, from Dear Mama to Shed So Many Tears. My, I think my mother knew that freedom wouldn't come in her lifetime, just like I know that it won't come in mind. Hmm. But it's a matter of either we stay like this or somebody sacrifices, somebody lay a track so we don't stay in a 360 degree deadly circle. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to break out and risk, you know, losing everything and being poor and getting beat down. But somebody has to do something. And we just got to be smarter and sharper or they're going to start taking away each and every person that steps forward to do anything positive for the community. I my faith in all, all good things come to those that stay true. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it, it was happening to me for a reason. You know what I'm saying? I was noticing. I was punching the right buttons and it was happening. So. It's no problem, you know. I mean, it's a problem, but I'm not finna let them know. I'm finna go straight through, head to the sky, and if they want to give me more, I go through more. I keep fighting it, you know what I'm saying, until the last time. How would you say that your life has been? What would you say about your life? How would you define it? I would say it's been like a test on my faith, you know what I'm saying? You know how, I guess his name was Job in the mm -hmm. Bible, who God just did all of this crazy stuff to him just to make sure his faith was straight. And that's how it was. It made me, if I didn't have all of this stuff, I don't think that my feet would have been so um, firm to where I could stand up for mm -hmm. anything, you know, and I would be um, less ready to deal with what's out there. We don't need no more rappers. We don't need no more basketball players, no more football players. We need more thinkers. We need more scientists. You know, we need more managers. We need more mathematicians. We need more teachers. We need more people who care. We need more, you know what I'm saying? We need more women, mothers, fathers. We need more of that. We don't need any more entertainers. Where do you see yourself in 20 years from now? If God give me breath for 20 more years, I see myself changing the world. Because my thought patterns are so opposite of what's the norm. Really? So I would have to change the world or I have to be changed by the world. If you're not dark inside and you come to this, this world, it'll turn you dark. You know what I'm saying? And so if you really have sunshine in you, it's not good to play in the dark. It's, it's, it's just going to extinguish your fire. I'm not saying I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee that I will spark the brain that will change the world.